Hi, my name is Mitch and I travel a lot. But for the many places I've been to, I've never, never been to Europe. As of the moment, getting visas for countries in Europe is a big challenge for me. And some aspects in my life need to change considerably to at least get a chance to set foot there. Well, I couldn't wait, I have some funds, and even without a visa, I wanted to experience Europe. At least, in the confines of its airports. Here's my story. My journey begins at Manila International Airport, where I'm checking in to catch my early morning flight aboard the Philippine Airlines A350 aircraft that leaves for Hong Kong. With many carriers to choose from, I selected PAL not only because of the type of aircraft they'll be using, but because I've always felt welcome and at home by the crew's hospitality. And true enough, as I stepped in, I wasn't only greeted with smiles, but also with recognition from crew members I've flown before. Now I'm flying to Europe from Hong Kong instead of flying from Manila direct as fares are really low out of Hong Kong due to the mass protests happening that time, with tickets to Amsterdam via Moscow going as slow as $400 per way. Anyhow, soon as I got to my seat, it didn't take long and we were taking off for Hong Kong. Once airborne, in-flight meals were quickly served, with priority to passengers who ordered for special meals like this Japanese bento box which I wanted to try on this flight. If I'm not mistaken, this one's limited edition on selected international flights of PAL out of Manila. And with the sumptuous flavor bursting in every bite, I almost forgot that there are some things I need to accomplish during my quick one on the way to Europe. One, to have dim sum in Hong Kong. Two, to try vodka and caviar in Russia. Three, to try some cheese in Amsterdam. And my ultimate goal, to take a shower in the UK. The two-hour flight from Manila to Hong Kong seemed quick, and we were taxiing to the gate where after our plane comes to a complete stop, we soon disembarked. But not before I say thanks to PAL's crew members who gave me something helpful that I can use on my London to Manila flight later on. In the meantime, I have to proceed to arrivals as my flight to Moscow is scheduled the next day. With plenty of time ahead, I proceed to a Chinese restaurant nearby to accomplish my first mission on this trip. I'm having seafood soup, dumplings, and some dim sum for late lunch. Now rather than sleeping at the airport, I just had to go on my way to get an inexpensive hotel room nearby where I can relax overnight, juice up my gadgets, and perhaps prepare and reflect about the countries I'll be transiting to. From my experience, nothing beats a good night's rest with all peace and comfort before a very long journey tomorrow. The next day, I was back at Hong Kong International Airport, lining up to check in for my flight to Manila via Moscow, Amsterdam, and London. Now this got some airline staff very puzzled. Right now they found uh, my route uh, strange, so they're going to verify my uh, itinerary. So. Well, it's a strange itinerary, but it's allowed. Thank you. At first, I was scared as I didn't have visas while passing through those European cities. But since I'm only staying airside and have onward tickets, it seems that I'll be fine. Now waiting for me is Russian flag carrier Aeroflot. A growing feeling of excitement overwhelms me as the boarding process started, as flying to Russia only seemed to be a dream before. With a bit of research and some guts, I never thought it would be possible to experience all this. It's my first time to fly aboard Aeroflot and I'm excited to see an all-Russian crew. But unlike in other airlines, I rarely got a welcoming smile from them except for some. Now I reminded myself to keep an open mind as their culture may differ from what I'm used to and just tried to appreciate even the littlest of things I'd find pleasant from this airline. Once I got to my seat, I can't help observe the cabin and the passengers around me. Boy, I still can't believe I'm flying to Russia. IFVs began playing Aeroflot safety demo accompanied by movement of our aircraft being pushed back. Next thing I knew, we were taking off with our plane bound for Mother Russia.
Shortly after takeoff, I tried checking out the IFEs to see what stuff they have to entertain me on this 10-hour flight. At that time, crew members were handing out in-flight menus, to which I couldn't understand as it was all in Russian. But fortunately, there's an English version printed at the back. Soon, crew members started serving drinks, working their way from the back all the way towards the front. And once everyone served, meals were handed out with a choice between chicken curry and seafood pasta. Well, I thought curry was more flavorful, and along with an appetizer of smoked salmon, I wasn't disappointed. Right after meals, it was time to connect to friends and subscribers through onboard Wi-Fi, updating them where I'm currently at and what's happening, replying to messages, as well as posting photos of my travels on Facebook. And with a long flying time ahead, I can't resist joining my friends to do one round with them on Mobile Legends. As we entered Mongolian airspace, I thought there's still a long way to go that I had to put on my slippers for comfort on this long haul flight. I don't advise sitting too long and I had to walk along the aisle once in a while for exercise. And there's a good reason to do so as snacks are offered at the galley which is free for anyone to take. Close to halfway towards Moscow, there was nothing much to do but to take a nap or find something to entertain you further. In my case, I decided to edit some blogs while I had the time and occasionally peeking through a small opening from my window shade to savor the wonderful sight of snow-covered landscape down below. As we drew closer to our destination, the second meal service was served. With choices between pan-fried perch and chicken stew, I went for the latter as it seemed tastier than fish. Nonetheless, meal presentation was good and serving was enough to get me filled. Soon after, the magnificent sight of the city lights is seen. Cabin lights were dimmed as we descended into Moscow Sheremetyevo Airport. It all seems surreal, but seeing an imposing sight of the terminal that says Moscow Sheremetyevo convinces me that I've finally made it to Russia. With this being the farthest I've traveled westward from Manila, I'm quite excited to explore the airport and at the same time getting increasingly worried if I'd get held and questioned at immigration over my ridiculous flight itinerary. Well, if there's something wrong about my trip transiting from one European city to another, then they shouldn't have allowed me to fly in the first place. And yes, I also did my homework figuring which European airport allow passengers to transit without a visa. The catch? I can only remain airside, which means I can't go out of the airport past immigration, or else I'd get into trouble. Fortunately, things went smoothly at passport control after seeing that I have onward tickets and that I'm staying at this airport for less than 24 hours. What I immediately noticed is that they rarely smile here, and if there were ones that did, it's usually the Matryoshka dolls at the shops that seem cheerful enough to welcome me. Now I don't want to jump into conclusion that hospitality here is as cold as the weather, but I was told that locals here rarely smile at strangers, unless you're a close friend or family member. And though it's a challenge, if you get them to do so, it's either you made a good impression or you earned their trust. Knowing that, I'm keeping my spirits up and went on to doing something I like, which is plane spotting. After that, it was time to immerse on a bit of Russian culture, which brings me to my second mission, to try vodka and caviar here in Russia. Now the bartender warns me not to underestimate their vodka as it may knock out a non-drinker like me. With a few shots of fine Russian liquor and scoops of fish roe, it's another mission completed. Feeling warm and a bit tipsy, it was time to call it a night, and off to an airport hotel I go to to get a good night's sleep. I could have gone for a sleeping pot, but I just needed a place to wash up and refresh. And before I hit the sack, there's one thing stuck in my mind that will always serve as a lesson. It's what the bartender told me a while ago. You don't drink Russian vodka. Russian vodka drinks you. Early next day, I was lining up to board my connecting flight to Amsterdam. As expected, I was asked to step aside as agents were baffled as I don't have any Schengen or UK visa in my Philippine passport. But, as transiting passenger with onward tickets, I was eventually allowed to board our KLM flight, this time to the Netherlands. It's a full flight, 
but boarding process in the 737 aircraft was quick and we were taking off before we knew it. You need to retrieve your personal belongings. Please be careful when opening the overhead luggage bins because hand luggage could fall out. It's a usual routine. Soon after takeoff, crew members begin serving snacks and on this three and a half hour flight, we were served hot sandwiches and drinks. After some time, crew members were going around to prepare the cabin for landing. It seemed like a short flight, and making up for getting stuck in the middle seat and lack of in-flight entertainment was a surprise. An interaction with crew members and a glimpse of Dutch hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Welcome in Amsterdam. Yeah, it's my first time. But you have a transfer flight, sir. Yeah, I'm going to London. Oh, all London. London. Now, this was something I didn't expect. Unlike in Aeroflot, where I found crew members a bit reserved, flight attendants on KLM were outgoing and engaging. That one of them took time to accompany and show me which way to go. Oh well, I guess every country has their own unique way in relating with people. But, Surely these KLM crew members started my day in Amsterdam right. As we shuttled towards the terminal, despite the damp weather, I feel a positive vibe and I'm very much excited to explore Schiphol Airport in my 8 hour stay here. After passing through security, it seemed like a door was opened for me to experience one of the best and busiest airports in Europe. I'm actually getting a bit of Netherlands here, with so much tulips and cheese that's simply everywhere. And speaking of cheese, they're all displayed in different sizes and flavors with samples on display for anyone to try. With this, it's mission number three completed. For the remaining hours that I have, it's shopping for model planes and lunch at Schiphol Airport. In the afternoon, I proceed to my assigned gate to catch my flight to London aboard British Airways. This time, I wasn't asked about not having a visa as I will only transit at Heathrow for 5 hours. Like in my previous flights of this journey, I'm more and more excited the further west I go. I still can't believe I'm on my way to the UK, with what used to be a dream now finally coming true. I haven't arrived in London Heathrow just yet, but I'm beginning to get amused how crew members and passengers converse among themselves with statements ending with the words brilliant, darling, and my love. I think it's a very British thing, and I simply like it. Anyhow, just as I thought there were stacks handed out, they were simply for sale. And no, they don't accept cash payments, but rather through debit or credit cards. I thought it's only a 45 minute flight and I decided to just have a heavy meal later as we were already descending into London Heathrow. Finally, I've arrived in the United Kingdom still in disbelief that I actually made it this far. There's just so many things running in my mind like the royal family, British rock bands, Monty Python, even Mr. Bean. But despite the excitement, I have to accept the fact that I can't make it past the UK border control. Nope, not on this trip just yet. Still grateful for being able to set foot on British soil, I can only explore this huge airport beginning with a 10 minute shuttle ride to another terminal where I need to check in for my 13 hour flight back to the Philippines. Yup, even the agent thought my journey from Hong Kong to Manila via Europe was absurd. Afterwards, it was time to wander around this melting pot where people of different cultures come to travel. I still have a few hours to spare and with the time I have before my flight, I eventually proceed to Philippine Airlines Partner Lounge to get a free meal and to accomplish my last and ultimate mission. Right, so this is how it looks like. I'm literally gonna take a bath because I'm gonna have to prepare for a 30 hour flight. <laughs> well, so here we are, traveling about 6,000 miles from Asia to Europe to use the restroom and to take a shower. Now with this, my fourth task is considered mission accomplished. It was time to leave the UK, 
Maybe someday, when things get better for me, I'll get the chance to actually visit Europe, not just in the confines of its airports. For now, I'm thankful to have had a mere taste of the countries I've visited, experiencing their way of life through their international gateways. Meanwhile, I'm greeted with the same warm hospitality as I board my home country's flag carrier Philippine Airlines. It's something I'm used to, feeling at home in this carrier as crew members begin taking care of their passengers beginning with their smiles. Crew member Filipina Magat Santos in particular would even see to it that I stay hydrated throughout the flight, a small act of thoughtfulness that means a lot to me as a passenger. It's almost Christmas and I'm flying together with fellow Filipinos coming home to their loved ones in this very important season, which makes me feel a bit embarrassed thinking that they're returning home probably after years of stay here in the UK while I'm flying home for the silliest reason that I only use the bathroom here. For whatever reasons we have, we're all aboard this 13-hour flight and we're coming home. Shortly after we took off, crew members began handing out amenity kits which passengers can use to rejuvenate on board this long-haul flight. And not too long after that, serving of in-flight meals followed. I went for a western cuisine of pork and apple sausages with mashed potatoes for dinner, along with red wine to go with it. After that, it was time to check the IFEs, which I'm quite impressed with as it was very quick and responsive. Soon, lights were out in the cabin to help passengers sleep. But for me, it was time to connect to the net through a Wi-Fi access card given to me as a gift by PAL crew members on my Manila to Hong Kong flight. In my quiet time, I'm able to post updates on Facebook, keep in touch with friends and family, as well as check where in the map our aircraft's at through Flight Radar, an informative app that's quite helpful to me in tracking flights whenever I travel. Sometime halfway through the flight, crew members would go around handing snacks to passengers. Box sandwich along with English biscuit and orange juice were simply perfect as I was getting a bit hungry by then. After the rounds, I guess it was also time for crew members to have their snacks at the galley, while I had to stand up and stretch for a bit before returning to my seat to sleep the remaining hours away. A few hours passed, I was awakened by sunlight coming into the cabin, along with the smell of breakfast. Crew members were all over the cabin handing out full meals with choices of corn tocino and vegetarian sausage. Although there was sun, we didn't have it very long and it seemed to be setting based on our aircraft's direction. Turbulence followed where crew members had to secure themselves to the nearest unoccupied seats. The cabin was being shaken and it lasted for a couple of minutes. But soon as it was gone, our discomfort was replaced with a treat. The magnificent view of lights from Metro Manila finally coming into view. For Filipinos who have been gone from home for so long, this must have been a very sentimental sight to see. It's good to be finally arriving home. Like most passengers, I felt eager to disembark as if I hadn't seen my friends and family for a long time. In contrast, I wanted to savor my stay inside the cabin as my quick stop in Europe still feels unreal. But I had to go, thanking the crew along the way for their outstanding service I consider buong pusong alaga. Yesterday, tapos, lumipad ako ng Russia, tapos kumain lang, lumipad ako ng Amsterdam, kumain lang ulit. Tapos pumunta ng London kanina. Kumain lang din. Hindi, nag-CR yun. Labas ko na. <laughs> Tapos nag-connect ako na pala yun na. So, two days. Wow! Grabe. Tapos bukas. Hmm. Nag -nag Europe ko na walang visa. Transit, 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 transit. Yan. Yeah. Yun na yung feature ko sa vlog. Nag-commend ako sa inyo. Oo! Lipat-lipat. Hindi namin siya. Yun. Nag-airside. Pumigya ka. Oh, may natin lang ako. Tatlong ako. Okay. Okay naman, panalo naman yung nakita man mo sa labi. Nag-comment naman naman sa labi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Salamat po. Nagyang pahal namin sa iyo. Ang ilang po. Enjoy mo. Hindi pa dole. Palo na ito. Ulit, sir. Happy. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am Melanie, thank you. Ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Hello. My quick swing around to Europe has ended. Strange as if I've been away for so long when it's only been two days that I was gone. I sure missed all the chaos, the heat, 
The noise, the smiles and laughter, all mixed together that tells me I'm back in the Philippines. I'm definitely back home. For a very ridiculous reason for traveling, this is Mitch Young. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.